Hey, what's good, everyone? Look, last man here. Got the header trench still open. Everything's been defrosted. It's gonna be a few months before we put the ice back in. Probably August 1st. Figured I'd do a video on how the rink floor is made. Just to kinda, since we have it open, and just kinda do a basic, I guess, overview on how a rink floor is made. I'm certainly not an expert on how to make rink floors. Just not the, the cooling slab, but the entire rink floor, from the, the grade, the subgrade, to the insulation, to the cooling slab certainly by no means an expert but i was going to show you what we have here and kind of how ours was built i got some pictures that bruce took years ago when the, the cooling slab was being installed or actually the whole building was being installed but again since i have everything open here i'm just going to go over some basic components go ahead and comment below if you know more than me or if you want to add to the conversation here that'd be great but basically what you're seeing here is the main header pipe and i'm kind of actually sitting right where it goes into the refrigeration room those two bottom ones down there are the subfloor pipes, the charge and return. And this right here is the return for the, the brime. And can I get a good picture of it? Oh, it's on my other foot right here. And that is, right there is the re, or excuse me, let me get this right. That right there is return. And this one right here is the charge. So you basically have a six inch ring pipe right here. And I'll flip that picture upside down so you guys can see it. It's a six inch ring pipe scheduled whatever schedule 80 there you go it's actually rink pipe made for rinks or i should say pvc pipe made for rinks same thing right here this says right there fraser valley refrigeration this right here is two inch rink pipe and it actually says ice rink pipe on this piping right here so it's pretty cool i thought it was just kind of some general stuff anyway so you got a cooling slab right there it's about four to five inches typically Maybe I put a tape measure on ours and do an official measurement what our cooling slab is. But our cooling slab right here runs, or typically a cooling slab, I should say, runs a little bit wider than the ice rink. Our posts are concrete into the concrete, cemented into the concrete. So it's not, we don't have a modular system or ice dam or anything. So, but basically what you have here is a floating slab of concrete that runs and it kind of ends right there the concrete slab you see in the hallway there and a the concrete slab where, where the player benches are so to say it's separate than this cooling slab right here so this cooling slab right here contains from my understand is 186 tubes going out i'll show you here in a second the return trench here and how it's set up but then there's 186 tubes coming back to the return header pipe there so you basically got two six inch header pipes then a bunch of one inch rink pipes going into the cooling slab now this header pipe right here runs all the way to the end just kind of just past the ice machine this actually whole trench runs into the end of the building this trench basically runs the whole width of the building but the header pipe itself ends just about underneath the ice machine because you can see i'll show some put a little picture there the bleeder valves at the end that the header pipes get the air out when you first start the system up as well as it runs all the way to inside that little storage closet there. Again, I'll show you a picture here. All right, this is the inner header pipe right here in the electrical room. I'll show you the one underneath the ice machine here in a second. But at the end here, there's little bleeder valves that allow you to bleed air out of the system. If you get air in the system, you first charge the system with brime, or if you have to do any kind of repairs to the system, you gotta bleed air out. There's also bleeder valves in the middle of the pipe, as well as those are the subfloor heat bleeder valves and header pipes and the ends and stuff. Boy, I gotta clean this trench out here, don't I? Now we're sitting on the other side of this pipe, on the other end of the room right there where I just showed you the pipe terminates. Again, right at the ice rink ends right about there. So a few feet past the ice rink, and you're gonna get your bleeder valves for your air. So this other pipe runs just a little bit wider than the rink. And you can see where people like stand here for the locals. If you ever wonder why it's so cold when you stand here to watch hockey games, it's because you're actually standing on the cooling slab right here. And that's also why we have problems with this board. You get a little frost over time. It starts building up and starts buckling the board. You can see there's two layers of plywood. We had to pull one up because it just got so delaminated. And that was kind of a couple months before we shut down. We knew we were going to shut down over the summer, just not so soon to kind of do some repairs like this as well as on the other side. But anyway, you got your cooling slab here. It's about four to five inches typically. And you can see peeking underneath there between the insulation and the cooling slab is a little vapor barrier. And your vapor barrier is 
I guess typically about five millimeters thick, four millimeters thick. Then underneath that, you have your insulation, and your insulation runs four inches. Now, legend has it by Andy, and he's here. He was here in the place was built, and he helped dig everything and put everything in, so he would know more than everyone. But legend has it that there's six inches of insulation down there. So that, that's I don't know why he did an extra two inches of foam insulation, but he did. So, but typically you would have four inches of insulation. That under that you have a sand cushion but your sand layer where you have your subfloor heat you can see the subfloor heat tube right there there's one right there as well as one right there and I don't want to say they run half as many but there's not as many subfloor heat tubes in the in the ground that are cooling tubes and I kind of skipped over a bunch of things as far as what's in the cooling tubes are I, I kind of mentioned it a little bit but our system contains calcium chloride and that's the secondary coolant and the primary coolant would be r22 for us in the chiller so and on the other side of this wall right here is, is a brine pump with a variable frequency drive that allows us to speed and slow up the movement of the brine based on brine temperature nevertheless you have your sand cushion it's about 12 to 13 inches the research i did your sand cushion that you have your subfloor heat tubes then under that you actually have about a foot depend on and this kind of word it really depends on when it's doing the research it really depends on your local area and how your ground and your soil is but typically you'd have 10 to 12 inches of compact gravel underneath your subfloor heat then you'd have underneath that 18 inches to six feet of porous materials so and that's where it makes up a rink floor and to review from the ground up again this depends on your conditions your local conditions and your soil conditions you have 18 inches to six feet of porous material then you have 10 inches to 12 inches of compact gravel then you have your sand base, and that's where it has your subfloor heat in. And that sand base runs about 12 to 13 inches. Then it's 4 inches, or maybe 6 if you're our owner of foam insulation. You have a vapor barrier. Then you have your concrete cooling slab. And your concrete cooling slab runs to 4 to 5 inches. And your concrete cooling slab not only contains your cooling tubes, it contains rebar to hold your cooling tubes in place. And where the return trench is, I'll show you here in a minute, that piping is also embedded in the concrete. Like I was telling someone about the return trench and stuff, they had no idea what I was talking about because there is no return trench. At the other end, where this tube here meets and this tube here meets, there's like a little U connector. And that U connector kind of completes the circuit, so to say, in the flow of the brine going in the concrete tube. Okay, so I put some wood up right here so you guys can see the return trench. This is where all the tubes from the other side meet. That go underneath the cooling slab right there. You can see the concrete slab that's right here. And this wood right here is just a little footer that keeps the concrete in while they're pouring it. And obviously they got holes in there so the tubes can go through it. But for this example, let's say this is the charge and this is the return. And this is the little U pipe right here that completes the circuit. So you would have charge, return, charge, return, charge, return. This goes all the way around the rink. And it completes the loop, the cooling loop, so to say. You typically wouldn't embed this type of connection in concrete. There's other types of connection, and I'll talk about here in a minute because I made a phone call. I'll talk about that here in a minute. But you have a different type of connection, a fusion weld that you could use, and you'd embed that in concrete. That'd be more ideal. Now, why it's not embedded in concrete? Well, it's, it's, I think that if you really think about it, it comes probably ap quite apparent that it just allows you access to these fittings here to fix them if they ever leak. This is one of the points that could leak, this end right here, as well as the header pipe right here. So by not having this embedded concrete, you come through if you have any leaks and fix them. Now, newer technologies out there, and when they install new ranks, this is fusing well together. So I think most applications that this is still embedded in the concrete with a different type of connection. So I don't I don't know if you'd want to keep this outside the concrete like it is right now with the fusion well. So if that ever failed, you could fix it. But before I get too ahead of myself, let's go back to the other side and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, to kind of wrap things up here, while I was editing the video and doing some additional research, I decided to reach out to a ring construction company just to kind of kind of ask some questions I felt like I really didn't know the answers to. And I reached out to a company called Everything Ice, and they gave me to a guy named Ian, Ian Bennett, and he spent some time on the phone with me. I mean, really nice guy. I really appreciate the time he spent on the phone with me. He's also sent me some additional information as far as how rinks are constructed. My basic questions to him 
or is this really a typical rink insulation? As well as what is a typical rink insulation? I was kind of kind of had some questions because you know there's header pipes located in the middle of the ice and at the end of the ice. So I just really want to know what we have is a typical rink insulation. And the answer to that question is kind of yes and no. I, 20 years ago, yes, this would be a typical insulation and in how the header pipes are set up and, and how the return trench is set up. Yeah, and basically how this is set up is is just basically for maintenance. So I think I think uh, I'm gonna be all over the place here for a minute. But the ideal rink insulation to say the header pipe is would be located in the center of the ice in the concrete and it's encased in in concrete and that's really for thermal reasons. So, but certain owners don't really I guess like that because if you ever had leaks, you can't really you know get there very easy without chipping some concrete out so but those connections are much different than the connections that you see here so you don't want to cement pvc pipe in the new pipe they use is hdpe piping i'll put that there what exactly what that means is i know it's high density poly something you don't have this type of piping i mean this right here is rink piping but this right here is basically pvc and you wouldn't want to concrete that in so what you see here is a is a rink setup a rink insulation that is just easily maintained you could come through if you had any leaks in the system because your connection points are basically at the header pipe or in the manifold here and at the other side with the u-band so if those are exposed if you ever had leaks you could easily fix them but nowadays they do fusion welding and the connections are a little bit different so embedding those in concrete is just not as an big an issue as in the past here with these mechanical connections. One of the things that Ian mentioned as far as why you would install a header pipe at the end versus the middle and advantages and disadvantages, one of them is the space. So having a header pipe located here at the end of the rink, you just you need more space. You need, it's also cost more to have a header pipe located in this uh, configuration because you have the trench and stuff the the account for it and build so if you have the header pipe located in the center of the rink and embedded in the concrete it's just i guess much cheaper to install as well as it's much more efficient to run but it's just if you ever have to maintain it in the future or get to a leak it's a little bit harder to get to i wouldn't know even have any clue how you'd locate a leak like that in, in a huge amount of concrete so i guess you kind of have to weigh the cost you know the pros and cons the costs and benefits of of each insulation but that's that's why you would want you know a header pipe at the end it's just basically easier to maintain it or get to leaks in the future and as far as steel pipe construction i swear to god i saw discovery channel uh video on tv that showed a rink insulation with metal piping and he says that's not very common because of uh, issues with the connections and i don't know if you refer that to a mechanical connection but you have uh, mechanical fasteners and, and certain clamps with metal piping that are prone to leaks now i always i always thought that everything would be kind of welded or soldered together but that's just not the case i guess at certain points you probably will have a connection that if you have it fusion welded it's much better of a connection than than any kind of connection with metals plus metals you have a tendency to rust even though you can run a glyco glycol versus a brime solution so basically metal tubing is not really done in ice rinks it's it's i guess it's it's rare versus common what you see with the, the header pipes the hdpe piping the header pipes that's what's common now you don't really use pvc or right, this kind of connections anymore. Everything is fusion welded. I think for now, it's gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna do a subsequent video here on rink floors because I really didn't touch on a lot of things. I really wanna do a video on the three different types of floors, the pros and cons of sand, concrete, and mat style floors and kind of compare them and basically do the kind of advantages and disadvantages on that and there's also a lot of other things i really didn't get to touch on i wanted to touch on this video without getting it too long go ahead and comment below what kind of floor you have do you guys have or what kind of setup you have do you have a header pipe at the end of the rink or is it located in the center or kind of down the length of the rink if you guys have the new hdpe piping fusion welded or you have these kind of old mechanical fittings like we do and again i want to thank ian everything ice i'm throwing some words out there i didn't know a day ago so i really appreciate your time and your knowledge go ahead and check their website out everything ice if you guys are putting an ice rink in go ahead and consider them i guess man they definitely know their stuff so they put a bunch of ice rinks in that's and that's the key is getting people with experience and the knowledge and 
and you don't want to reinvent the wheel when you're putting the ice rink in and stuff so but that's all i have for you guys today thanks for watching as always hope you learned something and like the localized man says stay cool